So my friends, it's finally here, the LG BX. This is the final LG release of the year. Let's get it unboxed, although, as you can tell, it is. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. Okay, so we've gone back in time now and here it is all in its box nicely. Now I've got the LG 55BX. This is the 6LB model. The 6LB just stands for what type of stand it's on. So I've got the darker stand. If you've got a different model to that, you may get the lighter stand, but I'll obviously show you that in a few moments. Now, just for transparency, I've purchased this. It cost me £1,299 in the UK. It's around about thirteen to $1,500 from what I can see. And I think that you may even be able to get a deal in the UK at the moment, but I'll try and find the best deals and leave them below for you. It would really help our algorithm if you gave this a like now and left a comment because we are buying these TVs to try and bring you completely fluid, independent reviews where we're not being asked to say anything by any manufacturer. Okay, so let's get this thing unboxed and we can show you what it looks like. Although, if you've seen any LG videos before, you probably already know. So inside they've got the instructions, the, all the warranty information and the controller. It's certainly not as nice as the Samsung pack that comes with it. Uh, everything else is pretty standard as you unbox it. And there it is, the little beauty. Now, one thing I always recommend is lay it down on the box while it's still in its packaging. If you are going to attach any wall mounts or stands, do it here so that you're not potentially damaging the screen. And also it gets a chance to have a little look at the back of the screen just in case there are any issues. I did have an issue on TV that I purchased recently. Okay, so the cutaway for the stand to go into is pretty standard. It's very similar to the CX and it's certainly very similar to previous LG models. It is a standard visa mount and that is around 12 inches or 30 centimeters and it's a square one if you're looking at buying a wall mounted bracket for it. You've got your connections on the back there and there's also some on the right and again we've got that built-in power cord which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Okay, this is the stand. Now, don't be fooled. This is very very, very light. There's a massive, massive difference between this and the stand that came with the CX. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't look too bad at all. In fact, it almost looks metal, but it is very light and it is made of plastic. Now, here it is against the CX stand. And as you can see, the CX stand goes from, well, almost the full width of the TV and is a really heavy stand. It is solid and your TV is not going to move anywhere. So I do hope that we don't have stability issues with the more plasticky and certainly significantly cheaper stand, which is on the BX. But we'll come on to that and we'll let you know in due course. Okay, putting that stand on is straightforward. Just slide it into place. You'll see that the holes line up. Make sure it's flat against the TV because it is easy for it not to sit quite flat. Once you've done that, just screw it in with the four screws. My dog always seems to be needing her walk as a TV arrives. Anyway, take off the protective layer and on the back thanks to one of my viewers from one of the previous videos there is some cellophane on the back of this tv as well as the front so this is the power supply as you can see it's a fixed one so if that's going to cause you an issue well then you have to bear that in mind the visa mount there is absolutely no cable management of any type that i can make out and again that's something which i think is a little bit disappointing on the lg range this year you do have your connections there's some on the back and i'll go into those in more detail in a second and there's also some on the side but there is a significant issue here which may come up in the full review but again i'll touch on that in just a second in terms of the thinness of the tv this is very similar to the cx it doesn't look any different in fact but it's super super thin it's stunningly thin it's incredible it absolutely blows my mind every time i see it now the stand front to back if you've got it sat on a tabletop is going to be around about nine and a half inches or about 24 centimeters 25 centimeters it comes out out about three inches at the front and about four inches at the back okay here is the rear facing port so as you can see you've got your antenna for your satellite and your coaxial cable there's an ethernet port and also optical digital audio out and an audio stroke headphone port now one thing that you guys definitely want to be aware of is that there are only two HDMI 2.1 ports so there's four in total but you've only got two HDMI 2.1 and they're both
both on the back. So if you want to be plugging things into the side only because you're wall mounting this, that could possibly be an issue for you. And the other thing to bear in mind is that out of those two HDMI 2.1 ports, one of those is the enhanced audio return channel port or the ARC. And therefore, if you're using that, for instance, for your soundbar, then you've only got one HDMI 2.1. So you know, you can kiss goodbye the thoughts of having two consoles or a PC plugged into that on the HDMI 2.1 port. So that may push you towards the CX, which has got four HDMI 2.1s. The power cable, which is fixed, is set at 1.5 meters, just in case you need to know that for your individual setup. Okay, what used to be one of my favourite things, which was pulling off the film, I don't know whether they're using different stuff now, it just doesn't have the same satisfaction as what it did previously. I don't know what you guys think about that, but hey, it's off and we're almost ready to turn it on. Let's just have a quick look at the remote control. Now, for me, I'm a massive fan of the LG Magic Remote. The Samsung one, certainly on their higher-end TVs, certainly look better, the metal one, the brushed steel. But in terms of comfort and design, the ergonomics of this remote, I think it's almost perfect. It is absolutely brilliant to hold. It's got everything that you need on there, and certainly I can't find any fault with it. One thing to bear in mind, folks, with this TV is that if you're going to be using a soundbar with that sloping front to that stand, you certainly can't put it in front because it takes it right up next to the screen, as you can see. And if you then push the TV right back and have the soundbar in front, I've just got the Sonos Beam here, which is not very deep at all. But if you push it back, as you can see, it then sits in front and will obviously sit a lot higher. Now it is only a few centimeters difference, but it is definitely something that you notice when it's in front. So one thing to bear in mind, guys. So this TV runs WebOS, which is the same as all the other LG TVs. Now I will give you in my full review my thoughts on the speed and operation because this is the lower processor, it's the A7 processor, whereas in the CX there's the A9. And I'll give you head-to-head -head video as well with the BX compared to the CX and we'll judge things like speed. But the setup process on this TV is an absolute delight, there's no issues at all. And again, it's something which has just greatly improved over the last three or four years the whole process is completely straightforward so in my full review I'll go through other sources and give you different examples of the footage that's produced but the video that you'll see in a second or the TV is just via my free-to-air digital satellite which is via an antenna and a little cheap plastic cable which then hooks up to this bit of plastic I don't know how the hell it works but it does a really good job I did feature it in a video a few months ago and I'm still blown away by it it cost about 12 pounds 15 dollars I'll leave a link in the description but it is one of the best bits of tech I bought this year okay so the the rest of that setup is incredibly easy depending on where you are in the world will depend on what options you've got for your free to air services or your on demand services again LG I've mentioned it in previous videos this year LG are now having BBC iPlayer featured on their on demand service but there is no ITV there's no channel 5 there's no 4 on demand so bear that in mind it's not a deal breaker obviously you can just plug a fire stick in if you want to but it's something which you may want to consider but guys as you can see this is free to air standard definition straight out the box I've not changed any settings this is completely live as you're seeing it and I'm absolutely blown away by the picture. I think it is very good. This is just standard definition. I'm going to switch in a second to HD and you'll get an indication of the difference. But let me know what your thoughts are. Is this something which you would be surprised at? Is yours as good as this? Straight out of the box. I think this is in eco mode as well. They all launch or they all have eco mode as their default. So this gives you an idea of the TV guide. Again, it's fairly easy to use, no great problems here. So if you are using the Freeview service, if you're in the UK, this is what you can expect. And again, if you're anywhere else in the world, then you'll get something a little different looking to this. Okay, let me show you the HD channels, which again, this is the HD channels that that aerial, that little bit of plastic has managed to pick up. But again, I've been really impressed. And if I just switch that on now, you will see. It's not bad, is it? This is just standard free to wear HD channels. Let me just scroll through a couple of channels for you to see. The one thing again, which I just don't ever get bored of when I'm looking at these OLEDs is that black level and it doesn't 
ever get boring. It just looks incredible right out the box. This is eco mode and I think it does an amazing job. In fact, this is probably one of the best looking TVs. I can't remember the actual CX looking this good right out of the box. But again, I'm going to do a head to head. So we'll see exactly how they are together. But yeah, blown away so far. And as always, if you really want to impress someone, then you can take it into retail mode. It does crank up the saturation, the brightness, but it does deliver some brilliant preloaded um, information. I did find that I did notice straight away that this loaded a lot slower than on the CX or certainly my perception was when I was waiting for it to come on, then it was a lot lower. But again, when it came up and showed the picture again, I just thought, those blacks are something to die for. They do look incredible. So guys, we've got a few videos coming up. We're gonna do a full review, obviously, of this TV. We'll do a head-to-head -head of this TV with the CX as well, so you can see the differences. We'll also do a head-to-head. -head. You may have seen my head-to-head -head of the CX and the Sony X-H90 or the X900H if you're in the US. I will do a head-to-head -head with this TV and that as well. And at the moment, I am sporting a Samsung Q80T here, which I've got to actually give back, so that's just a loaner from somebody. Um, but if you'd like to see a quick head-to-head -head with this TV, then let me know in the comments. But guys, let me know anything else that you want me to check out on the actual full review or on any of those head-to-heads and I shall do that for you. But let, give me your initial thoughts. Make sure you do like this video. As I said, it does help us with the YouTube algorithm. And I would be eternally grateful if you did. And also consider if this is your type of material, because we do plenty of this, consider hitting that red button as well. So guys, that's going to be it for this unboxing and quick first look and setup. We'll go into a lot more detail on the full review. But let me know what your thoughts are so far about this TV. Is there anything stopping you getting it? Any of those things like that stand or just two HDMI 2.1 ports? Are those deal breakers for you? Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.